Well, thanks for staying with us on the show this morning. Remember that your thoughts, comments, and opinions are also welcomed on the show. Do well to share them with us on our social media platforms. But remember, we're looking to have an objective conversation. It's all in the best interest of our beloved country, Nigeria. And beyond looking at it from the level of the federal government's roles and responsibilities, let's also remember that there are three tiers of government. And whilst at the second tier of government, the state governments, they're saddled by governors. Now, sub-regional efforts in terms of collaborative unity between governors have been established, much like the Southwest governors. Now, the Southern governors have also formed a collaboration and a clamoring for the institutionalization of state police. Now, they are to be chaired by the governor of Ogun State, Governor Dakwa Biodun. And in that engagement yesterday, we'll look at some of the pictures greeting this discourse this morning. And I'm still in the studio with uh, Dr. Aliu Elias. Now, talking about state police, is a lot of concerns on their powers being usurped by governors. Now, whilst there is federal police as well who are domiciled under the power of the IG, uh, the state police would now have their controls taken directly from governors. At a collaborative uh, forum under the SGF, would they now, in your thinking, be answerable to the chairman on a collective level, or would they still have to go through the others from their respective state governors. So here we see the governor of uh, Cross River State, more central. Uh, we have Governor Alex Oti also sandwiching him there following the engagements of the southern governors yesterday. Right. I think uh, state security is very, very key. And in fact, it can even go as far as uh, local government to have their own uh, uh, say. Because, you know, local uh, security is local and there's nothing you can do about it. It's quite uh, uh, local. So, for what I would just expect in the design is that. They should design it in a way that local government security will be answerable to states, the state will be answerable to the federal government. But you know, it is, as it were now, the system is that when you even see trouble going on in your state, you have to call the IG, the IG have to call the commissioner of police, the commissioner of police have to call the DPO in, in charge. It becomes a very cumbersome way of doing uh, things. But if it's that the state have its immediate action, that it can actually say, okay, security go to the in fact you don't even need to call they are there already you just take action and report appropriately so i think state police it's a better way to go for those people that say we are not mature when are we going to mature because if we have state police our uh, insecurity will not be generated to this level at which you know everybody is having a palpable you know fear in every every home in fact some states are so so it's so deep is of state like uh Castina. if you look at Castina, you see that some local government are all, all, even under uh, threats every time so i think we should do more but for southwest that we have much more advancements whereby you know in southwest you could see we actually virtually know ourselves because people can say okay you we know you we don't know but in the north it's not like that for us in the north they're more densely more populated. densely populated then even you you know because of the central language that we have you hardly know who is actually who people even come from as far as J, as far as uh, chad and they are domiciled in our environment we don't really know how much about them. in fact funny enough they could even show you their you know their identity card national identity card. so i think that's where we need to start working also because national identity card getting to the hands of people that are not nigerian is also a factor that we need to consider because if you go to southwest when you say you are from also particular area it's easy to actually know but do not it's pretty uh difficult to know so, so i think state police is the way to go whereby we'll get to know uh, so, and there will be direct command from the uh, the state uh, governor who actually is the chief security of that state. Well, interesting conversations this morning and on more feature highlights on the program this morning. We turn our next attention to a development that has more economic uh, concerns to it. Now, on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, it talks about a central story on the delisted firms where stakeholders have over 130 billion naira trapped in SEC finance ministry five years after. Now beneath that picture, uh, beneath that lead story, you also see the faces of the gentlemen concerned. Now the coordinating minister of the economy and minister of finance, Mr. Wale Edun. You also have Mr. Popo Olade and Mr. Agama. Uh, it, it's one of those challenges and we keep on hearing these issues of the listed firms stakeholders funds trapped 130 billion naira the other day i remember off the show i was trying to reach out to you for some information in right. terms of uh, a payment in relation to this as well right i i i think um, you know our regulatory body need to do more 
because i think they are the ones that are not really having helping nigerians because as a regulatory bodies you also have to get to know when a particular organization is getting weaker when they are having problems when they are having issues like issue of heritage heritage ban before it gets to degenerated to this level uh, you know cbn must have seen the hands of that things are actually getting uh worse to an extent so most of these companies have uh they are under a particular regulatory body so regulatory body have that on to be checking on them actually every year to be checking their status and you know from there you know when they are about to you know fold up you won't let it happen so that the people that invest in it we actually find a way of recouping their their money look at heritage but they said anybody w w that is ha having a much higher than five million has to wait until the property of the bank is being uh, uh sold and that's a serious process so i think sec also need to do more to actually make sure that they understand the health of that organization perhaps you know there's a different way of looking at the health of a uh, organization even common pension payment pencom where you see that they are not remitting pencom as so that means something is actually but the, the thing is nigeria we always find a way to really dodge those those things but i think every company that gets uh liquidated they should trace it back and make sure they hold the regulatory body responsible as well for such because with, with their good monitor it will not have happened now there's called for enhanced regulation especially as stakeholders have over 130 billion naira trapped in the second finance ministry five years down the line now still on more economic concerns this morning we're told by a feature story on the punch newspaper that the federal executive council meeting is set to hold today and some of the contemplations on the ground of that meeting would be on the determination for a new minimum wage remember the president bola metinibu was supposed to transmit a bill on that to the national assembly but it's currently on recess let's pick up the punch newspaper look at a few feature stories before we get into the headline story in the Punch newspaper this morning. Now captured above the masthead on the Punch newspaper, you'd find the picture of President Bola Metinibu inserted at the top right left-hand corner. It has the catchphrase, minimum wage. Be patient with Tinibu presidency pleads. Now the, the writer on that has that the Federal Executive Council meeting is set to hold today. And uh, one of the issues for consideration possibly would be a determination for the new minimum wage for workers we'll come back to the headline story here in a bit but let's have your thoughts on that right uh, you know the the the, the fact just means that the issue of uh, having a minimum wage as it were i think a uh, federal government need to uh, be sincere because now that you want to go to FEC to decide and before you transmit to national assembly have you actually taken along the stakeholder that is the very first question. And who are the stakeholders? The employee, the labor, and the government. Because you know, you could see that there is no good agreement that labor has agreed with 62,000. Uh, there is no also agreement from the uh, employee maker uh, that we have actually agreed that. Um, but government is thinking where well, within them this is what they can afford. So now, if you transmit this to national assembly and we continue to have labor. Uh, issue it becomes a serious problem then there are other labor demand that i think labor also should because for me i think labor should always go beyond asking for pay rise at every time it's not about pay rise you can be get, getting one million naira salary but it has no value but you can also get hundred thousand naira and they give you value that one million cannot give. and that's why we said all those things that is expected before first office removal they should make sure that they actually implement it the cng uh, that has been you know, touted so much as at now i don't think we have had up to five percent of nigerians you know enjoying it but it would have been good if we have 40 percent 30 percent people are uh, under it to have been very very fine and even our refinery up to now i'm not sure we don't even have any information that now i expect labor to lead their team because they agreed they yes. said there was going to be a joint visitation right I, in fact beyond that said people that work there are labor exactly so labor can actually, as well yes labor can just call on them and you know if i if this uh, man uh, pengasan uh what's his name tuc man uh festus from sifo do you know that he's actually having a two cap is the uh chairman uh, for labor of pengansan is also tuc president president so i think by now should i bring about the analysis that okay this is why we have not had this refinery 
we're working, you know, and we are also expecting uh, Dangote refinery by these are the things that should be put in place that will actually cushion the effect of this and also food inflation. I like I said the last time here, uh, President Bola made to Nubu's declared state of emergency on food security about nine months ago. So by now, I was thinking we should be seeing the you know the results of that because if you are actually work on the uh food supply i mean food supply chain and also work on the irrigation all around season uh farm by now we should be seeing farm produce tomato and other pepper and other farm produce should be available at affordable cost by now so i think uh, uh the federal government need to be much more conscious and carry uh, the stakeholder along in their decisions now, it's a very good call on the federal government as the Federal Executive Council meeting is set to hold today. And amongst the deliberations considered is the determination for a new minimum wage for workers. We'll return now back to the front page of the Punch newspaper and look at it from another angle. In terms of its lead story, following comments made by Alhaja Liko Dangote, who has accused the NMDPR of handing over licenses to foreign importers who are import adulterated fuel into the country he has also largely accused the iocs of frustrating his plans to roll out fuel now this is the lead story as captured on the punch newspaper with the catchphrase dangote refinery operators seek fg intervention as marketers opt for fuel import dealers slam iocs nmdpr silent amid dirty fuel importation accusation right i think uh, it's quite interesting that uh, alaji aliko dangote is actually bringing this uh but before i make comment on the uh the story itself you recall that dangote immediately he came into cement cement also have uh, issues and people suffered because where is the uh, benue cement where is the uh, boham cement? Cement. cement where is ashaka cement where is the beto cement it's because of dangote who actually came with uh, a kind of uh, you know a superior and what have you and all those uh, other one are having it's serious challenge. Lafarge, I, I, I think Lafarge is still on, but the thing is that it's like Langote know how to really work with federal governments very well. That actually gives him that uh, robust uh, 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 support to actually uh, came even in sugar. I remember in sugar there's a time that he even said he's the only one that is have right to export uh, uh, sugar. So now he's in another industry now that he also have a kaba that those people are actually much more. Uh, stronger so he's now coming out with uh, a lot of uh, uh, reasons but he's a businessman i think as a businessman you always find your way to do uh things but he's actually calling uh, coming out to see this because he needs support uh from the federal government from the ECOWAS, you know from africa as it is but i think he actually deserves the uh support because for him to bring about such a uh, monumental uh project to africa and to do missile in nigeria there's need for the president Bola Tinubu and other to actually support him to actually uh make sure he break uh, even however he made mention of uh, a dirty uh fuel you recall that the our own refinery i recall some time ago that was the same accusation that was given to our own cement that uh, we have a bad uh, uh fuel and we this resolve to import artisan and Nankute is also coming to say that uh is there is a bad uh fuel and n n n n n n d p r r r are also making sure that he's not uh, doing fine and io ioc i think he's actually creating room for his own market too because that language is simply means he's creating room for his own market to also try because i do and i also want us to have this cautious optimism that dangote will not come back and say because of these challenges he cannot sell to us at the lower at a lower price, price. that's another but that's another you know that's another thing that we should use because it's only that good that actually spoke even his uh uh, is he managing that his vice his vice president vice president let's look at the comments from his vice exactly. president so we carry so, uh, our viewers at home right uh, just in case you haven't uh, heard the vice president oil and gas dangote industries limited deva kuma edwin has also lent his thoughts to the conversation as well you would find it on the premium times feature story he says it appears that the objective of the iocs is to ensure that Nigeria remains a country which exports crude oil and imports refined petroleum products. It appears that the objective of the IOCs is to ensure that Nigeria remains a country which exports crude oil and imports refined petroleum products. Mm -hmm. The Vice President Oil and Gas at Dangote Industries Limited Deva Kuma Edwin here speaking. It is quite expected that uh, every country 
that is in the business of oil and gas will not want Nigeria to actually uh, produce uh, its own oil because you know we are rent seeker. Nigeria is a rent seeker whereby we actually export our crude at global price that we don't have the, 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 the we don't determine they will process it there all the value chain is taken advantage of will now still import it back as a nigerian and at the global uh price so they wouldn't want you to so because you know why once you export you are exporting a uh, value chain out and you are importing around that poverty you know what you are exporting what you are supposed to benefit that's what it simply means so those people that are uh, we are taking to their country we are creating jobs for them while we are importing poverty so for for Dangote, our vice chairman to have made mention of this that's why they said there is a serious cabal denying Dangote uh, all those uh, processes that will make it much more easier and that's why nigerian government uh, uh, from tinubu uh, the ECOWAS, the african uh, government union. union must come to support uh, Dangote, uh, Dangote oil and uh, oil and petrochemical company to make sure that they come into uh, to to success because if they don't, are not succeeding we are going to continue uh, to be depending and, and importing poverty as it were because if Dangote succeeded there's a lot of things that would be better in fact our naira to dollar value would have had a better one but it's quite appalling that even now Dangote is also importing crude oil it is a serious problem now the, the challenge like he said because uh, i listened to that clip as well and we shared it yesterday is the fact that the entire 54 member states in africa only two countries libya and nigeria are the ones who do not depend largely on importation right the remaining 52 countries depend solely on importation right of uh, refined petroleum products and even crude oil the african union you've called on echoes as well how do we get africa out of this because Shackles. we have we have the resources the crude right. is here it's keep it's been lifted out and we're only having refined products at the global market price of 90 dollars per barrel we must uh, begin to have african interest first right if you have african interest first and we look at a uh, development that we expect we will find a way to support this uh, uh dangote because look at 52 countries it's a very cost effective way for africans you know ghana will come close to nigeria you know the cost of transportation would have been killed the issue of venera to dollar or uh cds to dollar would have been uh, out of it so it's a serious one that we must all come to support i recall you're only looking at pms a lot of other produce are there over 25 yes so if we actually make this one work it's going to help us in terms of reduction in cost you know and even time because if you are going to uh, import from any country across the world it may be taking you two months but this one within two weeks within one week you receive your your consignment and that's a good one so africa must make sure that this work and it more we must take the lead from nigeria and we must also be patriotic as the nigerians because there are some utterances that we also made that are not supposed to be saying those things we must find a way to be patriotic in this case this is our own and we must uh, take ownership of it because it's going to be at our own uh, benefit who will work in this uh, factory africans and nigerians who will I take advantage of the you know the lot of value chain there in because Dangote also depends on some people to supply them some uh, facilities and we also in fact there's a power generation also there in that the whole southwest can actually benefit are you aware of that the, that Dangote refinery if it's well supported they can generate power that will help all the southwest even let's say south that will benefit from so we must find a way to make it work but Dangote itself must also be uh ethnocentric we want to say to also consider us in terms of the cost because cost also matters because you could see that some marketers are saying now they want to go and import you know right so they want to go and import is also a sign that if dangote does not give us a better price they will also open the border uh, uh, for them and we look let's even look at fmc cg fast moving consumer goods look at the competition in that area if we, we have a robust competition like that in our things i think that would be that would be fine so i think we need to do more to support dangote in this uh, uh, fight against international uh, conspiracy or kaba as it is uh, called well, quite interesting points from Dr. Alihu this morning with a call on uh, the authorities in concern following accusations that the IOCs and NMDPR are forestalling the rollout of refined PMS from Dangote Refinery. Now, we look to wrap up with two more papers and then it will set the premise for a professional angle 
to the discussion as Nigeria currently battles with cholera and the World Health Organization has put the death toll at over 1,900 deaths since the first case was recorded this year in January. Now it's on what they call epidemiological control. Two papers this morning have that in its lead story, The Vanguard and The New Telegraph. Now on The Vanguard, you see the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC declaring a cholera emergency and it has also proceeded to set up measures in that regard. Now that story is the similar focus on the New Telegraph that says epidemiological evidence and CDC declares public health emergency on cholera, places Nigeria on high risk of transmission, impact, activates EOCs as death toll rises to 29 in Lagos, 53 nationwide, records 1,528 suspected cases across 31 states as at yesterday. Now, the challenge is on a behavioral change as well. Cholera is a disease linked to poverty and poor sanitation right many have also pointed the lacuna that their lack of vaccines as well that are causing this breakdown uh let's just get your thoughts as we look to wrap up you know you know we've not been this lucky to have a professional as minister of uh, of health you know and it's now comes of health and social uh welfare okay. now the thing is and is someone who is very very uh grounded in terms of uh, uh um vaccine if you look at him you know he was uh, gavi he was in gavi and understand but i think nigeria have not learned its lessons because if you look at what happened in ebola and what happened in uh, um, in COVID-19, I think would have had a strong structure that would have a uh, agenda, a uh, easy uh, implementation of this uh, these things. Because when you talk about uh, cholera, it's well known that it's much more of a uh, of a, uh, sanitation. And if you look at even Lagos Island, that is actually affected. If you look at Lagos Island, it's more of a much more cluster that you know that there is no a lot of uh, a space that need a serious attention. I think serious attention is needed in that area. But moving forward, I think we should. Just just resume our attitude of uh, hand wash and what have you you know the schools have to like uh, take charge and we see how we can really uh, this then the uh, ncdc should do more in terms of uh, you know making uh, coming on board to really sensitize people about what to do and the importance of hygiene i must thank you very much dr aliu elias for taking our time to look at the papers with us this morning thank we you for having you. me